Every time he has a hard sparring session, it's like he's the happiest. It's, you know, he gets this release. He just enjoys chaos. And uh, the cool part is, is I can see him grow. Oh, let's go. At the upcoming UFC 300 anniversary tournament, two tough and uncompromising fighters will meet. Real favorites of the public, Max Blessed Holloway versus Justin Highlight Gage. If I go in there, you know, I just go in there, I open the door, and you know, when you're ready to give up, you know, I'll grab your hand, walk you to the door, give you a pat on the butt, and say thank you, come again. Because as soon as they go inside the octagon, they attract the attention of even the least spunky martial arts fans with their violence, intransigence, as well as their willingness to go to the end. The punch count, the amount of shots that he lands, that he throws. He's got so many records. He's landed the most strikes, the most headshots, the most body shots. The man is an output machine. The volume of numbers that he throws is ridiculous. If I could bet, <laughs> yes, I respect both guys. Both guys are great fighters. I think I would put money on Max, just him being the dog. Justin Gaethje, I got my, I got my mindset on him. I know, I know how good. I have a Hall of Famer, a future Hall of Famer, standing in front of me. A very dangerous man. Never sensed power in every single limb of his body. But Justin Gaethje is not just the BMF champion. He is also the number one contender. And their status will be reinforced by the title Baddest Motherfucker, which, although not the title of undisputed champion, has its own special aura. Born on the 10th Island in Honolulu, the pride of Hawaii, Max Holloway fully lives up to his nickname Blessed, bypassing the unfavorable environment in the face of crime, the burden of drugs and addictions, which is what his parents faced. Max came to the sport at a fairly late age, thanks to his talent and speed of learning. The young Hawaiian passionately absorbed everything related to martial arts. In addition to training, he gained knowledge through video games, which he himself stated more than once. You see. So what did you do for striking? You want you really want to know what I did? Yeah. Me? You know, you and I'd be like, look, I tried this in the game and it was working. Let's try it. And we did it. I figured it out from freaking UFC, UFC, the regular UFC game, the first ever UFC game. What? Not wanting to drown in the routine of ordinary work days from morning to evening, having found himself in martial arts, Holloway significantly made up for his rivals, providing strong competition in both kickboxing and Muay Thai. The Hawaiian did not get lost on the mats either, becoming the owner of a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Inspired by his success in the ring, Holloway decides to try himself in mixed martial arts. Blessed made his debut in MMA at the age of 19, scoring four victories in a row, was noticed and signed by the UFC, having accumulated statistics of three wins and three losses, going on a streak of two defeats, Max Holloway turned into a real Blessed Express, sweeping through the entire division, showing himself to be a real virtuoso of striking techniques with endless endurance and athleticism, having 10 victories over the top of his weight behind him, along the way taking the famous scalps of such fighters as Cub Swanson, Jeremy Stevens, Charles Oliveira and Anthony Pettis, and the title of interim champion, finally finding the Brazilian Waldo in his backyard. And that is this might take it to Jose Waldo. Hashtag, where's Jose Waldo? Let me know when you guys find him. I'll be waiting. Beat the King of Rio twice, marking himself the new king of the featherweight division. He has a streak of 13 consecutive wins, including two title defenses over legendary Brazilian Jose Aldo. as well as over promising, confident challenger Brian Ortega. The Hawaiian decided to challenge the title of interim lightweight champion with his old counterpart, Dustin Poirier, again losing to the offender, this time in a close, spectacular and uncompromising fight, worthy of the BMF title. back at home again in the featherweight division and coming off a willful victory over favorite Frankie Edgar, 
the Hawaiian Superman ran into his kryptonite in the face of Volkanovsky, although the trilogy was close, and the second fight, in the opinion of most fans and the organization's management, Max took the fight completely in his favor. What separates the champion from the challenger is his mentality. The champion always comes back, and so began a new chapter in Blessed's career. An incredible performance against Catter, Max literally finding his way out of the Matrix, nearly sending Kelvin looking for a way out of the octagon. Don't talk to anybody and go right to the hospital, man. All right? A solid win over Yair Rodriguez and an insane knockout against the Korean Zombie. <laughs> and fans have every reason to believe that the Hawaiian's next outing in the welterweight division will be very different from his first time around. If I remember correctly, the Poirier fight was uh, on short notice, so we didn't have a whole lot of time to actually add muscle, so a lot of the weight that he went into the fight with was was not good weight. I got a shot to, uh, you know, prove my case, prove my worth, and uh, we'll get to find out April 13th. Go into battle determined to win and you will return home safe and sound. Go into battle determined to die and you will live. For he who clings to life will die, and he who despises death will live. Highlight proves his nickname with his insane bloodbaths in the cage. The Arizona woodcutter, unlike the Blessed Express, lived in a favorable family, where the only problem was the financial component. Having success on the wrestling mat behind him and an unwillingness to work in a copper mine inspired by fights. From then on, I was like, oh shit, one day I'm gonna try that. Justin decides to try himself in MMA. Brutal, brutal slams. Right away I was like, oh my God, he's dead. The Tucson native has German and Mexican roots, which directly reflected in his style of vision of battle, namely Blitzkrieg, with hints of the Mexican temperament. He says, I get a high out of the lights, the crowd, the cheers, the noise. Fighting style, he's just a maniac. He's one of the most aggressive fighters I've ever seen. Having MMA record 17 victories in a row and gained a reputation as a tough fighter, the chainsaw man from the MMA world in addition to the attention of old school MMA fans, also attracted the attention of the UFC management. And neither the fans nor the promotion made a mistake. The debutante was met by Michael Johnson, the owner of the fastest hands, which even the fast Gonzalez would envy. The conflict between the fighters fueled interest in the fight because according to Michael, Justin is a victim of incest. Did your mom have sex with her brother to have you, or was it your cousin or something? Because you're the most inbred piece of shit I've ever seen in my life. The fight was much more than praiseworthy, and was nominated for the title of Fight of the Year. The initiative passed from one to another, but in the end, Highlight repulsed his opponent's body and legs, and with them, the opportunity and desire to continue the fight. Having met Eddie Alvarez in his second fight for the unspoken title of the King of Violence, Justin for the first time became familiar with the octagon flooring, as well as the bitterness of defeat. But needless to say that there are no losers in such fights. The next one to check the testicles was Dustin Poirier. Soon, under the leadership of Trevor Whitman, the Arizona Lumberjack was able to control his fiery temper and take his career into a successful direction, scoring a win streak of four victories, leaving behind the lifeless body of James Vick, a broken cowboy in the saloon, as well as the feudal lord of roundhouse kicks, Edson Barboza. But the brightest and most significant of them, as in his entire career at the moment, remains the fight for the interim lightweight title against Tony Ferguson, turning El Kuki into an ordinary scarecrow. Oh, it's 
Unfortunately, Highlight didn't succeed in unifying the belts because in this fight he was like Bob Sapp and not his best years. The next round of the American's career was a bright victory over Michael training champion Chandler. He is a warrior. We were, we are living in the wrong times, let me tell you. Me and him should have been fighting to death in a Coliseum. That's what should have happened. And an equally bright defeat at the hands of a champion who has a name, Charles Oliveira. Now Justin is on a two-fight winning streak, having taken Poirier's health away in his last fight, and he also took the BMF title. which he will defend in the upcoming fight at UFC 300 against Holloway. Whether he will succeed or not, we will find out very soon on April 13th. But I got to fight Max Holloway now. My life does not exist after April 13th at this point. Um, I think 155 is his perfect weight class. I think he's the, the best athlete, the best competitor at 155. Motherfucking towel, brother. I know you're going to talk. <laughs> he, he looked at me and I, sh and I nod my head. He wanted to give me freaking liquids in my body. So it ain't he no I said do it, brother. Like that, let's get, let, get me off this damn stage. How important is it for you to take that belt back, that BMF belt title back to Wainai? Oh, it'd be a lot. It'd mean a lot, man. It'd mean a lot. Being from Wainai, having the BMF would be cool as shit. Be that as it may, everyone who was honored to fight for the BMF title will forever remain in the hearts of fans of mixed martial arts because the opportunity to fight for this title is already a great honor speaking about the difference between an athlete and a real fighter. No matter how successful your record is, no matter how dominant a champion you are, no matter how strong and smart an athlete you are, you may not be a true fighter, ready to jump into a dogfight, give it your all, ready to kill or die in a cage, because in addition to the heart of a champion, you need the spirit of a warrior, which is not given to everyone. Everyone determines for himself why he fights, 